If you're new to ChatGPT, these five habits are more than likely the reason behind your mediocre results and poor writing. But since AI is coming for all our jobs, it's probably in your best interest to become an AI wizard in as little time as possible. I suffered from all five of these habits, but once I fixed them, my writing massively improved and I became so much better with ChatGPT. It's easy to fix them. Let me show you how. Habit number one is using simple, straightforward prompts. Now, normally it's a good idea to keep things simple, but not with ChatGPT. This is an easy mistake to make because almost everyone's first prompts they try, they come out way too straightforward and their results are very disappointing. If you wanna get good results, ChatGPT needs clear, precise prompts. For example, instead of asking, can you write an essay on Hamlet for me? Ask instead, can you write an essay on how Hamlet's madness affects his actions and relationships? The more specific you are in fleshing out what exactly you want it to do for you and what you want it to cover, the better the outputs are gonna be. To avoid overly simplistic prompts, spell out exactly what you want from ChatGPT. You can list out step-by-step -step exactly what you want it to do, and you can add this to your prompt to get better results. So ask it to be concise or wordy or detailed, or you can ask it to be specific or give examples. You can give it some ideas for what examples you want it to include or let it run with it. You also want to tell it what format you want it to output. So whether you want it to be an essay, a blog post, a tweet, an outline, letting it know exactly what you want is the best way to get what you want. Also hot tip, the GPT-4 version of ChatGPT is a much better writer than the default 3.5. So always use GPT-4 when given the choice. Right now it does cost $20 a month to access the version of ChatGPT with GPT-4, but in my opinion, it is definitely worth it because if you look at any comparisons, it just outputs much more creative, much more interesting pieces of writing than 3.5 is capable of. Habit number two is not checking for lies. Now ChatGPT lies often and it lies well. It is very confident in anything it says and it will not tell you, I don't know. It will just make something up instead. It will frequently make up a plausible sounding answer and present it to you confidently so it's not obvious that it is a lie. So this is why you have to check always because ultimately you are responsible for anything this robot spits out. If you are using anything it writes in your schoolwork, in your job or in personal projects. As a rule of thumb, anything it says could be a lie. So you do want to double check facts, but it is particularly likely to lie or be incorrect. If you are asking it to do anything with math or numbers, or if you are asking for links and references, ChatGPT is not at the moment connected to the internet. So it can't actually look things up. So if you ask it for a link to a web page or the name of a specific scientific paper, more often than not, it's going to make that up. Habit number three is using the wrong AI for the task. Now I know this is a chat GPT video, but it is not the only tool out there. And in fact, there's a few things that it's not very good at and you should use something else for. Now ChatGPT is specifically a bad choice if you need it to reference the web, reference recent events, provide links or reference specific things like quotes or papers. And if you need an AI to do any of these things, it's best to use Bing because Bing is connected to the internet. Now Bing runs on GPT-4, it is free. So that does give you access as well to the better writing version of GPT. So it's good for that too. And an added bonus is Bing references the things it looks up and you can click the links and fact check it right away because it provides the links. Now there is one caveat in that ChatGPT should be able to do this better soon because with the release of plugins, there is a web browser plugin that's going to give it the ability to connect to the internet and perform searches before it answers you. But for right now, the plugin feature is very limited. I don't have access yet. I have requested access a week or two ago and I still don't have it, but for now, Bing is the tool you want to go with. So let me show you an example of where ChatGPT is bad at this. So for example, I've asked ChatGPT to find five scientific papers that explain how sugar and obesity rates are related. Tell me the main points. So I go down and it gives me five different papers and gives me the main points of each one. And I've paused this and gone and actually searched to see if these are actual real papers. And surprisingly for this search, it actually did pretty good. The first four of these, I searched the name of the paper and did find that that paper existed in that journal by those authors. 
The fifth one I could not find, so I don't know, maybe my Googling skills are not up to par. But as far as I can tell, this is not an actual paper written by this guy published in this journal in this year. So it is not completely accurate. I do think this is going to get better as new versions of ChatGBT roll out, but for now there are better tools to use. So if I go and take this same thing and pop it into Bing, it's going to give me a similar output, but it's also going to give me the direct links to any of the papers it references. So I don't even have to go, you know, copy paste titles into Google and see if I can find them. It'll give me the direct links. So let's pull up Bing here and see what happens. Let's pop in that same question and see what it comes up with. So this is what Bing spit out. It gives me one, two, three, four, five different papers and tells me the main points, but you can see it references them. So I can click each one and go and double check that that's actually the paper it says it is. This makes it a lot faster and a lot easier to double check. Habit number four is engaging in one-way discussions only. Now, the first thing most people do when they play with an AI for the first time is they use it like they would use Google. So they'll put in a simple question like, look up my name or who was the first president or something like that. And obviously looking at my name is not going to work because it's not connected to the internet, but questions like who was the first president? Yeah, ChatGPT can answer that, but the results are boring and not too exciting. And it's not really that impressive that it could figure something out like that when we've had Google for years and Google knows it too. So more often than not, you're going to be disappointed by any one and done style of prompting. ChatGPT actually works best with feedback where you have a two-way discussion where you go back and forth with the AI. And that's because ChatGPT can learn from us. It learns from your previous prompts and takes that into context whenever it is creating a new output. So for that reason, don't ignore or dismiss ChatGPT's mistakes. You wanna point them out and ask it to correct itself and improve its writing. So let me show you what that might look like. So let's try, write a one sentence poem about love. Love, a celestial dance of souls entwined, whispers eternity in the fleeting embrace of a heartbeat's sigh. Okay, maybe that's a bit flowery and I don't like it. Maybe I want it to be more lighthearted and fun. So I can tell it to make those corrections. So this is do flowery, write it again, but this time make it more lighthearted and fun. So love, a playful breeze that tickles the heart, weaves laughter into life's kaleidoscopic tapestry. Okay. Still not super happy, but again, I can go back and forth and give it suggestions, ask it to fix things and correct things. And I'm gonna end up with something much closer to what I want, something much more interesting than I would by, you know, just telling it what to do once and then leaving it at that. Habit number five is missing out on advanced techniques. And what I mean by advanced techniques is giving ChatGPT things like a specific role, a voice, a style, or target audience. Now, these are things most people don't think of when they're using tools like this for the first time, but they're really simple to implement and they are going to 10X your output and give you much more interesting results by including them. Let me show you what I mean. So the first and most powerful thing you can do is give ChatGPT a role. Now, depending on what you want it to do, you can give it a role that matches. So common roles you might want to get it to play are a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, a literary editor, depending on what you're asking of it. So to give it a role, you simply include in your prompt, you are a role and then ask it to do whatever. So you are a literary editor. Please read my essay and tell me how I can fix it and make the writing stronger and more persuasive. You could ask it to write in a specific tone. So if you're writing a blog post targeted towards moms, you might want it to write in a friendly, approachable manner. Instead of you're asking it to write you an essay for your economics course, you might want it to be professional or serious. You can of course assign it a tone, see how that turns out, and then ask it to rewrite it again in another tone and then compare and see which one works best for you. You can also ask ChatGPT to write towards a specific target audience. Now, this is really useful for me as an entrepreneur in that I can ask it to write towards my specific target audience of my business. So if I am getting it to write sales copy for an app that is targeted towards kids, then I can tell it to write this targeted towards kids. Or if I am writing a speech to present at a professional convention, then I would tell it to target it towards whatever that audience might be at the convention. So the target audience for you might be professional, students, kids, retirees, busy moms, or what have you. You can also ask ChatGPT to write in the style 
of a well-known figure or writer. So you could ask it to write in the style of Jane Austen or Ernest Hemingway or modern day people. It doesn't have to be a famous writer. It could be a public figure. From now, I could ask it to write in the style of Mr. Beast. I could ask it to write in the style of the New York Times or write it in the style of the academic journal nature. The last advanced technique I find useful to include in my prompts is to ask it to write in a specific format. Some format examples are a persuasive article, a tweet, or an academic essay. Now, all of these advanced techniques are really useful on their own, but they're even more powerful if you combine them. And you will get vastly different pieces of writing by tweaking and combining these into larger prompts that help us with our mistake number one in being too simple and straightforward. By combining these advanced techniques, you are being much more specific, much more precise in what you're asking the robot to do. So you're gonna get way more interesting pieces of writing out of it. Keeping these common mistakes and habits in mind and being mindful to avoid doing them and to fix them in the ways that I've shown in this video is gonna help you perform better than the vast majority of people using ChatGPT. And as I've heard it best, you're not going to be replaced by AI. You're going to be replaced by somebody else using AI. So by getting good at using these tools now and by staying ahead of the curve, you're positioning yourself to be valuable, be useful and productive going into the future, into this chaotic landscape that is coming barreling towards us because of amazing tools like ChatGPT and these other AIs. But to help keep this top of mind, I've put together a free PDF AI prompt cheat sheet, which you can grab at the link in the description below. I've included a bunch of prompt templates as well as examples. So you know exactly what you're looking at and you can refer to that whenever you are using ChatGPT or Bing or other AI tools. This is super helpful. And again, you can grab that for free at the link in the description below. So those are the five beginner mistakes and habits killing your results with ChatGPT. And if you fix them, you're gonna be a ChatGPT wizard in no time. Hopefully you got something out of that that was useful. If you are interested in learning more about crafting really good prompts, check out this video over here that is all about how you can get the most out of Bing, which is a good compliment to ChatGPT because it does some things that ChatGPT doesn't. So I highly recommend checking that out. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.